Hi everyone, in this video we are going to find out what is the necessary condition for two quadratic equations to have two common roots. That means both the roots will be common between the two given quadratic equations, right? So suppose we have two quadratic equations that's been given to us, let's say a sub 1 x squared plus b sub 1 x plus c sub 1 is equal to 0 and the second one is a sub 2 x squared plus b sub 2 times x plus c sub 2 equals 0. So those are the two quadratic equations that's been given to us and we have been told that they have both roots common. That means if the roots are alpha and beta, then the first equation will also have alpha and beta as the root. Second equation also has alpha and beta as the roots. That means alpha and beta will satisfy each of these equations. So the first equation will be satisfied by alpha as well as beta. Second equation will also be satisfied by alpha as well as beta. Now, because for each of of these equations the roots are alpha and beta so from the first equation can we say it like this so if you say the sum of the roots from the first equation the sum of the roots would be alpha plus beta alpha plus beta would be what negative b by a that would be negative b sub 1 by a sub 1 that's the alpha plus beta from there and then what would be the alpha times beta let's see the alpha times beta the product of alpha and beta that would be c by a which is c sub 1 by a sub 1. So that's all we get from the first equation. Now let's try from the second equation. So from the second equation, if we try the similar thing, we're going to get alpha plus beta is equal to negative b sub 2 by a sub 2. This is from the second equation. And similarly, alpha times beta would be c sub 2 divided by a sub 2. Now you see that this alpha plus beta value, I'm highlighting them with a with a yellow box right here. So this value and the next value for the alpha plus beta, they both represent the value of alpha plus beta. That means they have to be equal, right? So if they have to be equal, can we write it like this? Can we say, okay, so negative B sub 1 by A sub 1 must be equal to negative B sub 2 divided by a sub 2 and from here we can say okay so if we bring a sub 1 onto the right hand side and then bring b sub 2 onto the left hand side so it will be negative b sub 1 divided by b sub 2 negative b sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 divided by a sub 2 so from here we can say a sub 1 divided by a sub 2 is equal to the negative will cancel each other the negative sign meaning the negative one in the numerator and the denominator will cancel out each other so from there we can say okay a sub 1 by a sub 2 is equal to b sub 1 by b sub 2 so that is one necessary condition that we have found so far and now let's look at the value of alpha times beta the product of alpha beta meaning the product of roots so if you look at those values then you will see that the values that enclosed in this white box right here they both represent the product of alpha and beta so they must be equal because they both represent the same thing product of alpha and beta so they better be equal now from there we can say okay if they are equal can we say it like this can we say that okay so c sub 1 divided by a sub 1 must be equal to c sub 2 divided by a sub 2 and then from there we can say okay if we bring the a sub 1 onto the right hand side and then c sub 2 onto the left hand side we will have c sub 1 divided by c sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 divided by a sub 2 and from here can we say that a sub 1 divided by a sub 2 is equal to c sub 1 divided by c sub 2 so a sub 1 divided by a sub 2 is equal to c sub 1 by c sub 2 similarly here we also found that a sub 1 by a sub 2 is equal to b sub 1 by b sub 2 so combining these two combining these two equations can we say like this that a sub 1 by a sub 2 is equal to b sub 1 by b sub 2 is equal to c sub 1 by c sub 2 and this is the necessary condition for the two quadratic equations to have both roots common. So the two quadratic equations that we started with, if they have alpha and beta as the roots, then, then this is the necessary condition that a sub 1 by a sub 2 is equal to b sub 1 by b sub 2 is equal to c sub 1 by c sub 2. Now let's take an example and see how to use this theory in, in practical questions. 
Suppose we have been given two quadratic equations and they look like this. So this is our example here. We're going to do a practice problem here. So suppose x squared minus kx plus 2 is equal to 0. That is one condition or sorry, one equation. And then we have the other equation as x squared plus 3x, x squared plus 3x plus p is equal to 0. So we have two unknowns here. We have k as the one of the unknowns and p is the other unknown. But we have been told that these two equations have both roots common. That means they have the same roots. First equation has whatever roots. The second equation also has the exact same roots. So now because they both have this both roots common, we can use this condition here, the condition that we just found. So let's use that condition and see what happens. So from here we can say, okay, from here I'm going to say because they both have common roots. So from here, can we say it like this? So we can say a sub 1 by a sub 2. So in this case, what is a sub 1? Well, that is positive 1 and a sub 2 is also positive 1. So a sub 1 by a sub 2 would be positive 1 by positive 1 is equal to b sub 1 by b sub 2. In this case, what is the b sub 1? That is negative k. Negative k is the b sub 1 then divided by b sub 2 which is positive 3 and that must be equal to c sub 1 by c sub 2. So what is c sub 1? That is positive 2 and what is the c sub 2? That is positive p. So that's the relation we get from the given two equations and the theory that we know so far when both uh, equations have two common roots, right? Now from here, it's pretty easy. So from here we can say, okay, so one by one must be negative k by three. So from here, let's do it like this. So from here we can say that, okay, one divided by one, one divided by one is equal to negative k divided by three. And from here we can say, okay, then negative k is equal to three. And from here we can say, okay, k must be equal to negative three. So we have found the value of k. And similarly, we can also say from here, we can also say that 2 by p is equal to 1 by 1. And from here we can say, okay, then p must be equal to 2. And we have found the value of p also. So we have found the value of k and value of p. And those are the solutions that we needed to find out to, to make sure that these two quadratic equations have both roots common. So the quadratic equations should kind of look like this. So your quadratic equations, the, the two equations would look like this. So we can again rewrite them using the values of k and p. We have already found the answer. I'm just going to show you how the quadratic equations would look like. So if they have to have common roots, then they're going to look almost identical, right? And if you use the value of k as negative 3 there, so your first equation, the first equation will kind of look like this. It will look like x squared minus kx, but k is negative 3. So minus kx and k becoming negative 3, that becomes positive 3x, then plus 2 equals to 0. And if you look at the second one also, that is x squared plus 3x. And then the value of p is positive 2. So that is plus 2 is equal to 0 you see they look fairly identical and that's accurate because we know that they have same roots so they should look identical that is when they can have same roots right i hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video